Hey everybody, welcome back to the PD Rest channel, where today I've got another guide for you with the cup cars around Daytona. So, welcome to Super Speedway Week. Should be a real fun one. So I'm not going to insult your intelligence by giving you some really in-depth lap guide for this one. All you really need to know is that during qualifying, on your outlap, run the top to build as much momentum as you can, and then hug the low line around the track to actually set your lap if you do want to qualify. Other things that we'll talk about today will be steering ratios, how to move through the draft, how to manage your temperatures, and where to look on track and your trackside objects so you know when to turn in and exit the corners. That's going to help you a lot. Well, So, I decided to use the AI that we've had for a short period of time and set up a race to try to learn different lines, see how the draft is going to work, and that way I can get a bunch of good clips that really show you what's happening with the car um, on a plate track. So I decided to do the AI because I didn't want to cause a bunch of wrecks and have a bunch of people mad at me because I was trying to push it three and four wide when I shouldn't have or when I was trying to figure out where I need to look at on the track. So uh, that said, AI feature is actually pretty awesome in iRacing. It works pretty well. So excited to test this tool out and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So I think we can forego looking at the track map this week. Um, there's really not much to talk about with the shape of the track other than the fact that it's a giant two and a half mile long trioval with incredibly steep banking that's almost four stories from the bottom of the turn to the top of the turn. But that's pretty much it. Uh, everything else you need to know is not about the actual track itself. So first and foremost, we've got to talk about steering ratio. So the dirty short version of steering ratio is that if you have a 10 to 1 steering ratio, then it takes 10 degrees of you turning your wheel to turn your tires one degree. And um, turning what I would consider to be increasing your steering ratio, it might be the opposite way that you would describe it, but I would call it increasing if you went from a 10 to 1 to a 16 to 1. So now it takes 16 degrees of steering to turn your tires 1 degree, turn your front wheels 1 degree. Um, I'm going to pop up two pictures on screen right now that show the difference um, between the two different steering ratios mid-corner. So, as you can see, the steering ratio on the right, we're turning considerably more compared to the one on the left, which gives us all kinds of benefits. We can feel the car more. You don't have to be worried about the car becoming very twitchy. You have more control because if you're running the middle line, you are able to make finer adjustments without the car getting really out of shape or start waggling all over the place. Same for the top lane. Uh, it also has the added benefit of uh, letting you not scrub off as much speed because you're not overturning and you're holding a much steadier line through the corner. So you can actually be a little bit quicker with a 16 to 1 ratio. I haven't tried anything higher than 16 to 1, but be my guest if you want to give it a shot. And the next really important part about super speedway racing is where, where do you look? When you're in a pack of cars and you're right up on everybody and everybody's pushing and shoving, I, I mean, there's you can't really see the track. You can see the sky and you can see the corners of your car. And that's about it. It's kind of like driving blind. So I've got three examples um, we'll do to show you kind of where I'm looking and what kind of markers I'm looking at to figure out when I need to turn in and what I need to look out for and things like that. When I'm in the low lane, I will look for the double yellow line on the bottom of the track and I'll pick a spot on my dash and I'll compare that with the yellow line and I'll see if I'm kind of wiggling back and forth. Another thing you can do is there's three supports on the left side of your windshield or like mounting points right there next to the roll bar. You can pick one of those and line it up with the grass and just glance at it. Now the last thing is I look for the Sunoco sign no matter what lane I'm in. Right when you pass it, you know you're about to start your turn into the corner. And lucky enough for us, at the entry and exit of every corner, there is one of these Sunoco signs, so be on the lookout for it. Okay, middle lane. If you are in the middle, you are truly in a sea of cars, and you're in a dangerous spot. So, uh, the best thing, the best marker that you'll have 
is looking up at the top of the fence here. You're going to want to line up the top of the fence with something on your windshield, something else that's stationary that you can look at to judge if your car is shifting back and forth. And once again, we're going to look for the Sunoco sign for turn in. So those are your two things you want to look at if you're in the middle. And if you're up here in lane number three, you've got the wall to look at, which is very comforting, I know. So you'll have the wall. You can kind of judge your distance away from the wall to see if you're moving back and forth. You may also be able to see the top of the fence um, as well to kind of judge. You can use that same trick. And again, look for that Sunoco sign. That's how you're going to know when to turn in and when your exits are coming up. So now that you know where to look, you got to know how to manage your temperatures. That's a major factor of plate racing is managing the engine temperature. So there are some ways you can do that. Um, if you leave a gap between the car in front of you and yourself, you can get a little bit of air to the nose and you can cool down the engine. If you're right up on somebody's bumper and you're pushing them real hard, you are not getting any air into the front of that car to cool it down. So one thing you can do is, again, you can leave a little bit of a gap. You can also, if you look down right under where it says Mustang on the car, that's the grill opening. So that's where the air is coming in at. And you can see that it's kind of shifted over towards the right of the car. So after you push somebody uh, and you're trying to leave a little bit of a gap, you can poke the right side of your car out just a little bit and get some air to the nose and let it cool back down. If you let the car get too hot for too long and the numbers on the dash start going red or they start flashing, then you're doing um, damage to the engine you're going to lose power, and it has a chance to just actually let go altogether, and then your race is done. So here's an example. We're not actually really pushing this car in front of us, but we are close, and the, the air bubble that we're kind of making in between our two cars, because there is a pocket of air between the back of this car and the front of mine, and we're able to push them along, but we're not actually tucked up touching their bumper. And you can see we're just poking the nose out a little bit, and we're able to get that grill opening into the air and cool off the engine. An important note about pushing another car, anytime you're pushing somebody, you want to be as square as you can get to them. You don't want to be over to the left or to the right because you stand a better chance of accidentally hooking them or spinning them. And something that we have to worry about that real life drivers don't is the occasional net code where the servers and the sim on your computer might kind of misinterpret where your car is and you can kind of hook another car. So you always want to be square on them if you're pushing. And here's a quick example of what we're talking about with the temperatures. You can see if we're over to the right a little bit, we're not really getting hot, but we're still giving that car a little bit of a push. As soon as we tuck in, temperature shoots up by about 5 degrees, so it doesn't take long at all for the car to get too hot. It takes a little bit longer to cool it down, so be aware of that too. If you stuck with the video this long, I appreciate it, and we're nearing the end. I just got a couple more tips that are going to help you on through the week. So number one, never push a pusher. Um, if the car in front of you is pushing the car in front of it, don't push them. You'll get them, you stand a much higher risk of getting them really out of shape and turning them around and causing a big accident. It's okay to pull right up close to their bumper, but don't quite push them. And especially not into the tri-oval or um, into the corner. That's when things can get really hairy and out of shape. Um, if you are on the top lane, it can get a little bit loose on entry and on exit. If you have to make a quicker adjustment, you can, you'll can you feel the car kind of get light in the rear end, and you might have to chase it around. So that's something to be aware about. Um, in the middle, well, if you're in the middle lane and cars are on your inside and outside, maybe it's just a me thing. Maybe it's just all in my head. But it feels like I can tell that the air is kind of buffeting and moving the car around. It just feels unsteady and it feels a bit lighter. It doesn't feel nearly as planted. So if you're not really comfortable with that feeling, then um, I wouldn't push it three wide too much until you're more comfortable with it. And that's where the AI can come into play. You can, you can really get used to that feeling and not have to risk any of your safety rating, not have to risk people getting mad at you or anything like that. So... That can be a good tool. Low line's pretty easy, except for if you hit the apron in the middle of the corners. Uh, and you tap the apron, it'll shoot the car up about a lane or a lane and a half. So if you're real tight, three wide, that can cause a big accident. Um, if you hit the apron coming through the tri-oval, 
it's really easy to spin the car right there. So if you do, it's going to be kind of tougher to save it. And um, a couple trips, uh, tips about the draft. About seven to eight tenths of a second back is where the draft starts falling off and starts to get a lot weaker. So if you're back there, you're kind of in danger of losing the draft if you're all alone. So you might have to hope for some people to check up in front of you that you can link up with and then you can drive your way back up there. Um, as you come up to a car to push them, it's a good idea sometimes to drag the brakes. So what that means is just putting a little bit of brake pressure um, down with your non-throttle foot or control so that you don't hit them too hard and get them out of shape. You can kind of gently pull up and not lose your momentum and give them a nice little shove. So, And in the draft, you can also lift off the throttle a little bit to maybe 80, 90% throttle, and you can save some fuel that way too. So with that said, that's a lot of the tips that I've got for plate racing. Um, thank you for watching the whole video. And again, I want to thank you all so much for the support uh, for this channel. We're nearing 100 subscribers. So, I mean, that's you know, about 99 more than I thought would happen. So, hey, th that's cool. Um, if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. That'll help me out a lot. And let me know how your race week is going. Let me know in the comments how Daytona is treating you. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everybody.